Welcome back. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. <clears throat> this is Pat Talks Law. Well, what a crazy time it has been. Elections and bill passings and political theater. Yep, today we are going to talk about the Moore Act. Congress in its infinite wisdom has decided they were going to pass the Moore Act. And you know where that's going to go? Absolutely nowhere. It was a safe bill for them to support because it will never pass. Um, now they can always say they voted for it. And when a future bill, they want to vote against it, they can vote against it and say that there was some subclause that they just couldn't agree with it. But they support marijuana legalization. Um, <clears throat> it's political theater. So, the question is, is do we accept that? I don't know. I think it would really, really floor the powers that be if the Senate actually took it up, passed it, sent it up to the President, Trump signed it. It'd be kind of one final FU to the Democrats, but that's not going to happen. <clears throat> so where are we going from here? Well, in Missouri, now that the election is over, Raker has come out and said that he's not going to reissue the licenses that were um, abandoned. <clears throat> so if you have not gotten your license in the year that, you know, completed your compliance check in the year that was allotted, <clears throat> they're not going to reissue that license to somebody else. doesn't believe it necessary there's necessary doesn't believe there's a market a fucking idiot um so what they're doing is DHSS Mr. Fraker are intentionally restricting the market, driving the prices higher for the companies that they support. I wouldn't be surprised they weren't freaking invested in them. The Cannabis Consumers Coalitions released um, a massive document. I did a video on it when it was released. <coughs> There was an FBI probe here in Rolla or um, Joplin, excuse me, that is related to medical cannabis corruption in Missouri. You know, at the end of the day, there might be a few people that get in trouble, but people that set this up and are profiting from it <clears throat> they're not going to be the ones that go down and they're getting ready to do it again the same people behind amendment 2 new approach Missouri are putting out their legalization ballot measure Right now, they're working on some language for um, how to handle marijuana DWIs. You know, that a urine test cannot be used as a um, as proof of current intoxication, which is fine because look, that's been the the standard for ever. Um, 
You know, they can do a urine test, but that can't be, it can't show current intoxication. If your defense attorney has gone to any of the MACL events, um, they would know that. So, right now, we have a very difficult fight ahead of us for those people who are pro-marijuana legalization. And that fight is, you can have legalization of sorts in an imperfect constitutional amendment that will cement and support the official drug cartel in the state of Missouri. Or, you can vote it down and hope that you get it by some other means. It is my hope that the state legislature will address this this fall. And there are several nonprofits and lobbying entities that are working on that. Uh, they're trying to get the legislature to support and pass a legalization bill and get that in front of the governor and get it signed and approved. The problem with that is that the the powers that be that you're needing to approve that that legislation stand to make more money off of the ballot measure. And look, folks, the reality of this is follow the money. Reporters that want to have a story, man, follow the money. This isn't rocket science. Who is profiting from this? It's simple. Follow the money. Now, if these investors are spending, you know, $20 million to win a ballot campaign, I mean, come on, folks, don't you think they should get paid back? Or that they should earn something on their investment? You know, I can see that. And I think that there's merit to that, to that argument. Um... Should that mean that we set the entire market up so that they have a monopoly? So that the cartels have a DHSS enforced monopoly? Um, no, I don't think that should be the case. And I'm not positive that that is what would happen. You know, I think that there are a lot of there is a lot of opportunity, even in the medical cannabis market. Um, a great deal of opportunity. However, there is not a uh, there's not an easy or a clear entry point. And as I told people who you know, came to us and want to talk about their licensing. There are very, very, very few successful licensees that did it on the cheap. Um, the people that, that won their license, they spent upwards of $100,000 doing it. And yes, the application fee was ten grand. So that tells you, you know, their legal fees were pretty, pretty intense. Their planning was pretty intense. And even then, a lot of the ones that want it aren't doing anything with it. Because they still can't get it done. At the end of the day, it comes down to money. Um, you know, proof of liquid capital requirements that was never going to be enough money to open a dispensary. Anybody who's running a business could look at that and say, yeah, you're going to need more. The entry cost for opening a dispensary is probably in the area of a half million to a million. Um, 
which, while a lot, is not excessive. Um, now, the entry cost for opening a grow facility is God, folks, your grow facilities are going to be in the millions. Um, you know, 30,000 square feet of flowering canopy space. Well, if that's 30,000 square feet for your flowering canopy, you've got another 60,000 square feet for the stages of clones. Um, then you've got your processing, packaging, shipping, administration, security, employee break room, kitchen, um, lockers, uh, you know, a site, medical office, first aid, nurse's office, that kind of thing. Um, by the time you have all that, your facility is not 90,000, your facility is closer to, you know, uh, 110,000. You know, you have to have your disposal for stem, seed, socks. Excesses that you can't use. let's face it, once production ramps up and the dispensaries are all open and they're selling, you know, the quality of the sold marijuana has to increase. You're not paying 60 bucks an eighth. So with that, they're going to start removing the less lower quality marijuana from that supply chain. Then you gotta have a warehouse to store it while you're waiting on the testing results to come back before you can send it to distributors. Um, this is all part of the process. So there is a very, very real chance that those facilities, well look at them. They're, they're large indoor facilities. And if they maximize their potential, which I don't think any of them have done to open yet, but the grow houses that are open are, well, they have room to grow. Pardon the pun. So, <clears throat> that's where we are at. Governor's doubled down now. He's been reelected. He doesn't have to to play games anymore or pretend that we're important. Um, it's to them we are. So. That's where marijuana legalization, medical marijuana is in the state of Missouri today. Now, I'm gonna be doing another video later this week on the uh, on a viewer suggested topic. I'm also gonna be doing a video on the sniff test, the smell of marijuana in vehicles, and reasonable suspicion for searches. So, we will be addressing that later this week in two videos. I also plan on doing another video in relation to marijuana and guns, and it will be the last one I do. going to do a better 
not a drive time, not a in the car. We're gonna do a, a, a better produced one. Um, Cause look, guys, there's so much incorrect information out there in the state of Missouri. And it is very, very difficult to know what is true and what is not. I would patrol. Somebody's getting a ticket. Oops, not me. So, yeah, <clears throat> with guns, I mean, we, we'll talk about that. I'm going to point you to the actual statutes and case law. We'll talk about what the reality is that you're going to be charged with it. Um, just because you can be or you might be in violation um, doesn't mean that you necessarily will be. You know, you'll have to make your own decision about how much of a chance you'll take on those. But we're going to get into that. We're going to do a video on that coming up. Um, and then sometime next week, I'm going to do a video on how you can profit on Missouri's medical marijuana and pending legalization without being a license holder. How can you make money? Um, look, those of you out there, you are the people that have um, entered this fray. You're the people that have fought so long and hard for medical marijuana and ultimately legalization. Okay? And it seems like all the powers of being are looking at you as, well, frankly, nothing more than pockets storing their money. How can you carve out a piece of that for yourself? And I think that that's uh, an important important question. There are going to be a lot of mom and pop businesses that come up. A lot of businesses that don't make it. But there are ways that you can profit on marijuana in Missouri. Now, I'm going to ask you to hit like, subscribe. You know, check back with us over this next week or so. We'll have more. We're going to have more of the breath testing videos. Not because I think that you necessarily, you know, need instructions on how breath testers work, but because it allows me to write off my drinking. Um, so I can take a tax deduction and I have to pay for my booze, which is just fucking awesome when you think about it. So we'll be doing some of those and uh, thank you. We'll see you again soon.